What an embarrassing loss for the Seattle Seahawks. Just absolutely destroying our Sunday afternoon. Losing 31-10 to to the Buffalo Bills. No passion on the field. No fight. No nothing. They had more penalty yards than rushing yards today. I think it was 82 penalty yards to 32 rushing yards. And that's just bad. They almost tripled the rushing yards in penalty yards. And nothing went our way. I mean, at the end of the day, and I don't mean that as in like, oh, tough break or the refs were hurting us or screwing us over. I mean, the Seattle Seahawks literally did nothing correctly for things to go their way. The end of the day, there were, you know, two goal line situations. The first one on the like one or two yard line, three yard line, maybe it was a little further back than the second one where Connor Williams snapped the ball on, uh, over Geno Smith's head about 10, 15 yards. And he said, my bad, my bad. But he snapped it, you know, whatever it was, 10, 10 feet above his head. And we didn't get our touchdown there. So it would have been 7-7. Instead, it was 7-3. to three. We drove downfield again after uh, Josh Job's interception on Josh Allen, which was the first interception of the year for Josh Allen came from the Seahawks. That was probably the only highlight that I can look at from this game. And we get down, you know, to the one yard line and we're going forward on fourth down. And of course, Connor Williams accidentally sticks his leg back too soon, steps on Geno Smith's foot on on fourth and goal on the one yard line. Geno Smith goes tumbling down um, and falls with the, you know, the fourth down not being successful. That's embarrassing for the Seahawks. It's frustrating for the Seahawks. And, you know, we could have been looking at a situation if both those plays went differently. We are at least talking about seven to 10 at that point or 14 or I guess, yeah, seven to 10 or 14 to seven. Instead, we ended the half. I believe it was 14 to three. We ended up losing 31 to 10. You know, their offense was chopping us up. Their defense was chopping us up, not, in, not allowing us to run the ball anywhere. Um, just absolutely frustrating loss. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't turn off games very often. I think I haven't turned off a game in like five years where I'm just like absolutely fed up with it. I did today. And of course, I turn off the game. I'm like, let me go get a recording done. Let me go get some content out, whatever. Let's talk about it. Let me get this off my chest because I'm obviously not happy with what happened in this game. Um, I put on on my side screen on my iPad red zone the first thing i see on red zone is d williams muffing a punt which i like the third time this year maybe uh and i'm just like there's nothing going for this team like it's absolutely nothing's going for this team and we saw fights today we saw Derek hall with an absolutely boneheaded mistake you know hitting josh allen way too late after a play which would have been what third and super long or four it was either third or fourth and super long um and instead it's an automatic first down for the Buffalo Bills and him and Jaron Reed are on the sidelines fighting, grabbing face masks, screaming at each other, pushing each other. Um, and that's just not what you want to see at this point in the season. Now I'm going to do a side to that because at some point you can also say that that's beneficial for a team sometimes to see the passion because a few minutes later you did see Derek Hall and Jaron Reed talking it out on the sidelines, you know, man to man, figuring it out adjustments, you know, Jaron reads a vet, Derek Hall, I think is in second or third year now. So it was kind of one of those don't do those things. Don't make those mistakes. Jaron reads an adult and a veteran in the room and probably telling him how big of a mistake it was. So, you know, first look, it looks really bad. Second look, you're like, well, at least they're figuring it out. That means these are brothers. They care. They really care about the success of this team, but still, that's not what you want to see. That means stupid things are happening on the field, which they were. So we have stupid things happening on the field, getting our butts kicked, like left and right, nothing succeeding. And of course, like there's a whole nother drive that, you know, the Seahawks had that was just embarrassing while they're down. I think on that drive, I have it on a tweet here on that same drive. It's the driver, Geno Smith, I think ran for a first down or got eight, nine yards. And he got a taunting penalty because like he taunted them and you know, then he started they started arguing and shoving after. Like taunting them while you're down so much on a run while you're running out of bounds. Like, is that necessary? Is that a necessary penalty to get? On that drive, there was a hold, a false start, a taunting, and an illegal formation, all within like a three to four minute span. 
you can't have that in these type of games. And what frustrates me the most, I mean, like when we talk about like really what frustrates me the most, the Seahawks are a team that is sitting at four and four, 500, not good, not bad. Just the, the epitome of average or of mediocre, or whatever you want to call it. That's who they've been. And that's who they are. They've lost four out of the last five games. They started off three and oh, and now they're four and four. They've lost four out of the last five games. But winning against Atlanta almost makes this more frustrating. And I'm not saying I, I wanted to lose to Atlanta, but the frustration comes from the fact that you're looking at a team that after the game against Atlanta last week, you say, hey, maybe they have something to them. And maybe that, that was, you know, that three game hiccup was three games in 10 days, you know, which was it's just like a, a crazy sequence or two games in 10 days, whatever it was three. Or, it was Sunday, Thursday, Sunday. Yeah. So it was, whatever the math is, you know what I mean? Uh, it was like a whatever short span for two or three games. Everyone was hurt. Everyone's beat up on the team and you're like, Oh, okay. A couple tough losses, good opponents, whatever you go beat the Falcons. You say, okay, they got it back. They're going to start figuring it out. The offensive line will be better. Defensive line was starting to make an impact against the Falcons. They were, you know, really pushing around Kirk cousins, making big plays, getting quarterback hits. And you said, all right, they're, they're, they'll figure it back out. To go win that game and then come out and be like this at home, which I don't know what's happened to the home field advantage. It's just like gone right now. That's where it gets really frustrating. You lost Atlanta last week and we were coming in this game at three and four and now we're three and five. We would have said, this is just who this team's been. They've lost five straight. They're not that good. But last week kind of gave some false hope, gave some false belief in what this Seahawks team can be. And it turns out that we shouldn't have believed that. We shouldn't have you know, believe that's what this team is. And the upcoming opponents, I mean, the Rams are no team to mess with. And they're good. They they beat the Vikings. Matthew Stafford's playing like a top five quarterback right now. They're getting better. They're very well coached. And I do like Mike McDonald. He's been really struggling, uh, I feel like, as a coach right now. But he's a first-year head coach, and he's like 36 years old, 37 years old, whatever it is. So, like, I don't care. They're struggling. But it feels like we've been getting out coached, And he'll probably get out coached by Sean McVay. I mean, Sean McVay is a top five coach in this league. So you go against the Rams. That's a tough game. And then you have a bye and then you play the 49ers who I don't care what the record is. Like they, you know, they've had our number for a couple of years. I think it's five or six straight now against the 49ers that we've lost. So I'm hoping the Seahawks can learn from some of these mistakes. There's too many of them. There's so many of them and they just keep happening. And I hate to see that. And I hate to have to, you know, look at this team and be so worried about all the mistakes they're making, but they just keep making it. And I'm hoping they can turn it around, but I'm just concerned. I truly am. No, you know, nothing about this team that I believed last week is what I believe now that three game skid. I think, you know, I was feeling a lot of the excuses of injuries and how many games they played in a row, having a Sunday, a Monday, a Sunday, a Thursday, another Sunday. Like it was just back to back to back to back games. But but if you do believe in them still this is my quick ad for the show is it's legal in washington state one the only sports betting app that is legal in Washington State is the Rebet app, and you can use promo code on tap or use the link in my description. But if you use promo code on tap, you'll see it on the screen here when you sign up. It's a minimum ten dollar deposit, and up to a hundred bucks they'll match you. So if you put fifty bucks, they'll give you a fifty dollar free bet, and you can use it like any other sports book. You can bet the Seahawks in the NFC West to make the playoffs. You can bet the spread of the game. That I bet the Seahawks. Uh, today i bet geno smith over a certain amount of passing yards lost both those bets but you can use it like that it, the way they do it it's like a social sports book so you actually have when you deposit your money it's technically rebet cash but then if you win you can take out your earnings in cash just like any other sports book so check out the rebet app it's, it's legal in like 46 out of 50 states washington being one of them and it supports me and helps me put out more content for you guys Use promo code on tap or the link in my description. And make sure you do at least a minimum of $10 when you do that first initial deposit and then we'll match it. 
But let's get back to the Seahawks really quick. The future is looking odd right now. Like, I don't know. We still have such a good chance this division, considering the fact that the division is bad right now. And considering the fact that I think four and four Arizona's in first place because they beat the 49ers and then we lost the 49ers. So I think if the 49ers win today, we'll drop the third again. Um, if the 49ers lose, we'll stay in second. Arizona will be in first. But these are all like within reach. I mean, Arizona, we have two games against them. We still have two against the Rams. We still have one against the 49ers. So despite all the negativity that I've probably spewed out on this podcast or this episode, whatever you want to call it, they have a chance to win this division just by winning division games. Uh, I mean, what is that left? Five division games. I mean, that puts you at nine wins right there if you win those five i'm not gonna i'm not saying we're gonna win all five but you win four out of those five or three out of those five you get a couple other wins against other teams here or there you're talking about a team that has a chance to win the division and make the playoffs we've seen it happen Pete carroll's second season as a head coach he was seven and back then it was seven and nine right 16 games seven and nine that was the beast quake run in the playoffs they were a seven and nine football team so yes there's a lot of issues yes it's not great yes it's frustrating but there's always an opportunity and a possibility for a situation where the Seahawks write the ship because of the division this year. If we were in a division that had, you know, the chiefs <laughs> or, you know, we were in the NFC North with the lions and the bears and the Vikings and all these teams that are, you know, six and two or, or whatever the records are now, uh, I would be very concerned. I'd be like, there's no way we even, we're not going to catch a wild card. So we can't win this division. Like that, that means it's going to be a wrap this season, but in our division, there's actually a shot. There's actually a possibility that you can win nine games and be nine and eight and win the division. I think it's actually possible, but there is so much they got to work on the offensive line. Hopefully they get George fan and Abraham Lucas back. Maybe it'll be better. DK Metcalf will come back for anybody who says we don't need DK Metcalf, oh, we don't need to pay him. I guess we do. Our offense looks awful without him. He's a very good football player. He's a very good wide receiver. We obviously need DK Metcalf on the Seattle Seahawks. So the vibe is low, but there's still some optimism, whether we like to believe it or not. I don't know if that's your choice, but there is some optimism and it, pretty much resides in the fact that the division is not very good. So take it as you wish, but that's just the reality. We'll be back this week, multiple times talking Seahawks football, talking about maybe what we can do to improve. How did our PFF rankings come out? How's the injury reports looking? What's going on in Seattle? We'll talk it all this week and I'll be back. I appreciate y'all. Happy Sunday and go do something to get your mind off that uh, Seahawks game and enjoy. Peace and go, uh, who is it? 49ers versus uh, Cowboys. So today, go Cowboys. Thank you.